Springmore is a small, attractive village situated at the head of a valley. The village is quietly located away from main roads, yet only seven miles away from the market town of Kingsbridge and 16 miles away from Plymouth. Church building of All Hallows, which means All Saints, stands a spiritual and architectural treasure in the village. I've met up with local historian Professor Susan Peabody, who knows a thing or two about the history of this old church. All Hallows Church was built around 1240 and the tower was added in the 14th century. In the 19th century it was at a sorry state to the extent that its rotting pews occasionally collapsed under worshippers during services. <laughs> I hear it has a colourful past. Another dynamic Ringmore rector, William Lane, roused local men to fight for the King during the English Civil War. He fired cannon at rounded soldiers crossing the bridge at nearby Abbotton Gifford. Seeking revenge, drowned troops landed at Aimer Cove and came after him. However, the rector stayed in, in the church tower in Ringmore for three months before managing to escape to France. <laughs> this tree looks very old. Yes, that's right. The origins of the site as a place of worship go back to Saxon times before the Norman conquest and the yew tree in the graveyard may date from this period. The village of Ringmore is first mentioned as the manor of Rymora in the Doomsday Book of 1086. In fact, there was probably a settlement there well before then. Many of the houses and cottages are thatched, some dating from the 17th century. The journey's ending, previously the new inn, dates from the 13th century. It takes its name from the famous play by R.C. Sheriff, about life in the World War I trenches, said to have been written at the inn. Before this, the pub, originally built to house the labourers who built the church, seems to have had an interesting past. Although described in a church document of 1685 as a house of good order and used for meetings of the very respectable town council, it actually had a false wall concealing a secret room where smugglers hid their contraband. Three different pathways down to Irma Cove from the village and connect with the southwest coastal path. Here you will find beautiful views, stunning cliffs and a picturesque secluded beach. Further along the coastal path in the other direction is the surfing beach of Chalaboa Bay and the shallow waters of Bigbury on Sea. Bigbury's most famous landmark is Bear Island, which overlooks the beach itself. The island is accessible at low tide when the waters reveal a causeway that links it to the beach. However, when the tide is in, you can still reach the island by hitching a ride on the popular and unique sea tractor. The hotel, with its eloquent 1920s Art Deco styling, is closely linked to Agatha Christie, as it served as an inspirational setting for many a mystery. A monastery once occupied Bear Island, just offshore from Bigbury. A small chapel was built on the highest point of the island in medieval times and you can still see the remains of the building there today. This was a Ewers hut occupied by a lookout who would scan the seas for shoals of pilchard. When he spied one 
he would shout and holler, pilchard, bringing fishermen running for their boats. At one time, local fishermen might have landed as many as a million fish a day. The pilchard inn on the island dates from the 14th century. It was once the haunt of notorious Elizabethan smuggler Tom Crocker and a place where he was eventually shot dead by the customs men. A tunnel, now bricked up, used to connect the inn to a cave on the beach where his smuggled goods were landed. Many routes around Ringmore are clearly signposted, so I've headed back to the southwest coastal path. Intrigued by some of the unusual plants I've noticed along the way, I'm meeting up with local naturalist Julian Ravencroft to learn more about some of the flora and fauna in the area. So Julian, these are pretty. What are they called? Well John, these are tree mallows. They grow along the cliff edges, particularly at Big Bree. They have large woody stems. A bit like brassicas. Yes, and large velvety leaves. They produce clusters of pink flowers with purple veins in the petal. And they are generally anything from 50 centimetres to 2 metres tall, or even more. What else might we see? Well, on the cliffs, especially between Big Bay and Shalakoop, you might find a wild relative of cultivated spinach, sea beet. Look out for these clumps of thick dark green leaves along the grassland cliffs. These leaves are edible and tasty, although with a bit of a strong aftertaste. I see what you mean there, George. It's a bit bitter. No, not for me. This looks rather like cauliflower. Here we have wild carrot, another country cousin of a garden vegetable, also grows along these cliffs, this time more commonly between Shalacombe and Irmok Cove. Also known as Queen Anne's Lace, it has delicate, feathery, ferny leaves and produces rosettes of tiny white flowers, often with a light blush in the centre of the flower head. Are these hazel trees by any chance? Yes, they are indeed hazel trees. They lie in the hedge bank along the green lane from Amok Cove to Ringmar. Hazel catkins and the tiny deep red female flowers that poke out from the ends of certain buds are amongst the first signs of spring. Later in the year, hazelnuts are a very important food source for, amongst others, the rare golden coloured dormouse. Well, Julian, we've seen some of the flora. What about the fauna? Well, John, in places the cliffs beyond Shalakul are peppered with rabbit warrens. This is ideal habitat for rabbits as they prefer well-drained grassland, and the gradual crumbling of these cliffs loosens the soil, making digging easier. It is also nice and open up here, which means it would be difficult for predators to get too close without being spotted. Are we likely to see any birds of prey? Yes, along these lanes and hedgerows, inland you may glimpse the sparrowhawk. This deadly hunter preys on smaller birds. It has a long tail to help it manoeuvre at high speed. It never hovers or soars, but zips along between trees or low along hedges, often switching suddenly up and over a hedgerow to surprise a bird on the other side. Crikey! 